Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts. In my last video, I showed you how to build this DIY flow-through worm composter. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up. Stay tuned. Welcome back subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the green shorts icon that's going to appear in the bottom right hand corner of the screen throughout the video. A flow through worm composter makes harvesting easy by processing finished compost right out of the bottom instead of having to dig through, sort your worms out of the castings. There are a lot of videos here on YouTube that show you the end result of a flow through worm composter. In other words, one that's already in operation showed you how to make it in the DIY video. You might want to watch that first. But in this video, I want to show you step by step on how I set this up and then install the worms and get this thing running. In case you're curious, the murmuring from stage left is not a studio audience. It's my neighbors in their hot tub. Yep. Before we get started on setting this thing up, there's actually one more element we need to make, and that's our harvesting rake. We're gonna make a little device that actually will rake between the string trimmer airplanes too. Lots of noises in this neighborhood. And I'm sure there'll be a leaf blower before too long as well. So back to the rake. We'll need to create a small rake that's gonna fit specifically through the trimmer wire that we've got along the bottom of our bin that allow us to reach up in there and rake out the finished castings. They'll drop down and allow more of the castings to continue down toward the bottom of the worm composter. That's why it's called flow through, because the compost starts out as kitchen scraps on top, the worms turn it into castings. It goes through this pressure zone here in the bottom, compresses down to soil, which makes the worms move up and then we rake it out of the bottom. By then, all the worms are gone from the castings that we don't have to worry about sorting them out. Usually, I build a prototype first and see how it works. So I'm going out on a limb this time, and this is my prototype. I'm pretty confident that this is gonna do what it's supposed to do, but I will report back if it doesn't. six inches wide. It's about 24 inches long altogether. I'm going to mark off six inches and then cut that off. I'm going to mark a hole between each string. I'm going to skip the two outside spots. I will pre-drill at each mark. The grain of my wood isn't cooperating. I'm more concerned that they're centered on this side versus being centered on this side. I think I'm going to be able to avoid the screw in the middle here even drilling these two holes. I'm going to put a screw in each hole. So I'm going to pick whichever side my holes line up better on, which looks like the other side. I'm going to start the screws on the side that is a little less aligned. Then the points will come through this way. So my drill bit was a little big on these. I could probably just push them in. It doesn't matter that they're loose because I'm going to add some airline hose to the other side. And this is an optional step. If you don't want to do this step, you might just file down the points on the screws and make sure you use a smaller drill bit so they're snug. But I'm going to put the airline hose on there to protect the trimmer line from getting worn down by the sharp edges of the screws. You could actually build this with nails. 
if you wanted to, and, and that would uh, remove the need to treat the ends to make them less sharp. So I'm just going to cut off a section of hose to match the screw length and cut enough for the number of screws that I have. There we go, we got a custom rake that matches up with our grid and then once once I get the soil in here, this is going to relax down and be out of the way. Our rake is done, let's get this thing set up. We want the soil column in our composter to mimic what we have in nature. In other words, compostables, detritus on the surface where our composting worms want to live. And then as the soil goes down, it's going to be more and more soil-like versus that top layer. So since I don't want my worms to get down here into this compression zone, I'm going to start by filling this with soil up to about here. But because the soil is going to be dry right now, I'm actually going to put a layer of newspaper in the bottom to keep the soil from falling out. Now eventually what's going to happen as I start to compost down, I'm going to be raking soil out of the bottom and then it's going to be replaced by castings as it comes down and that will be how our flow through worm composter will work. Eventually, all that soil will be removed. My soil in, I'm gonna moisten a little bit with rainwater. That'll just help lock the soil in so it doesn't fall out once the newspaper is raked out. You can see on the side that our soil comes up to right about here, just above where the compression zone starts. I'm actually going to be transferring worms to the flow-through composter from one of my existing worm composters. This is a two-bin system. This is easy and inexpensive, and I've got a DIY video on that. Some of this fresh bedding I'm just going to, and vegetable scraps I'm just going to move over. I'm using a grocery bag like a glove to transfer the worms. They were chowing down on the strawberries. There's some happy composters right here. Once I've got a layer of worms established here in the bin, I'm going to add in some bedding and some new vegetable scraps to get the next layer of compost started. Then vegetable scraps. I'm actually also going to add in some eggshells for calcium. I'm going to add in some sand for grit. Helps the worms process. It's like their version of dietary fiber. Some coffee grounds. And then another layer of bedding. For the record, I'm using colored newsprint here, but I'm avoiding any of the shiny coupons, which has a varnish. Most printing ink is soy-based, and so we're okay giving it to our worms. And finally, I'll moisten that down with some rainwater. Now it's time to put the lid on and put this on the back porch. The bottom of the trash can that we cut off goes in underneath to catch any drippings. Which, incidentally, is amazing fertilizer for your garden. Just cut it with water in a one-to-one -one ratio. Well, there you have it, folks. Worms installed in your flow-through worm composter. Let me know in the comments below if you've built 
this worm composter and the results you're having. And if you have any questions, you can ask me there as well. I'll let you know how mine does since this is my prototype as well. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. In this case, we're creating super rich organic garden soil and fertilizer using kitchen scraps. That beats paying top dollar at the home improvement store. Thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for new DIY videos every Friday.